Uh, Taoiseach, since last week's uh, last weekend's tragedy, it's Carrick Mines. Disturbing information has come to light about the conditions on halting sites uh, across uh, the state and the lack of investment by government and local authorities authorities uh, over uh, recent years. Uh, there was a tremendous article by Kitty Holland in the Irish Times uh, that made for uh, quite devastating reading, frankly. Uh, the Carrick Mine site was overcrowded. 29 people were sleeping in cabins and caravans at the time uh, of the fire. Dunleary Rathdown uh, County Council is one of 15 local authorities across the state that has drawn down no funding whatsoever this year for traveller accommodation. Taoiseach, in the last seven years, funding for accommodating the travelling community has been cut by a shocking 93%, from 70 million in 2008 down to 4.3 million this year. Taoiseach, of the 10,226 traveller families throughout the state, 445 are on unauthorised sites, living by the side of the road without anything but the most basic facilities. Some 104 families are on basic service sites, such as that at Glenmuck Road. A further 223 are sharing halting site bays with other families. 37 are sharing basic side bays with families. In addition, Taoiseach, 727 families are sharing houses with families. A total of 1,536 families are in overcrowded or unsafe conditions. Taoiseach, this cannot continue. Will your government immediately work with the traveller representative groups to ensure that the lessons are learnt from this tragedy? and that traveller families across the state are provided with the safe and adequate accommodation that they need. Thank you. Sure. The answer is yes. Uh, I visited the scene of the, of the in inferno at, at Carrick Mines. Uh, I have to say the site itself, while it was a temporary site of uh, eight, ten years ago, was a very neat site uh, and was very clean. The units, however, were around the perimeter uh, and were of the material that, was, that actually obviously caught fire and the 10 people lost their lives, which is a, an extraordinary uh, tragedy and so sad for everybody involved. Um, you're aware now that there is an audit being carried out on all the uh, traveller accommodation units um, uh, uh, and halting sites throughout the country. We have many of these in locations that I'm familiar with myself. Uh, make the point to you, uh, Deputy, that um, um, in, in places like Priory Hall and Longboat Quay, uh, and other locations around the country where you're supposed to have all the building regulations and the planning conditions adhered to, you've had fire traps. Um, clearly, in this case, where the, where the corrosive smoke um, was, I, I, I assume, responsible for people not being able to move, uh, and then the, that the fire took place um, resulted in all of that, in all of that, car, in all of that uh, uh, difficulty. Now, the, um, the, the situation is that uh, accommodation for travellers is provided through a range of measures. Uh, there's the standard local authority housing units financed from the Department of the Environment, uh, capital allocation for social housing, Traveller specific accommodation, which is financed by the uh, by the department, there's private housing, which is assisted by the state, and through the traveller's own resources. There's a, uh, an approved uh, traveller housing body called SENA, which has recently been launched, uh, and that's due to commence its, its operations shortly. It's open to travellers to opt for any form of accommodation. Uh, the, 20, the 2014 annual count of traveller families, Deputy McLaughlin, showed that of the 10,226 families, the majority were accommodated in either standard social housing, that was 35%, private rented accommodation, 26%, assisted private housing, 5%, or were housed through their own resources, 6%. 13% were in group homes or permanent halting sites and bays. 9% were sharing accommodation. 1% were in transient sites. And 4% were on unauthorised sites. Uh, and of that 4%, that represents a, a significant reduction on the first annual count which took place way back in 1999, which showed 25% of travellers at that stage on unauthorised sites. Um, th so that reduction, if you like, is due to a significant investment in traveller-specific accommodation, that's group housing schemes and halting sites, over the last number of years. 
the level of investment was reduced in recent years, uh, similar indeed to many other levels of investment. Notwithstanding this, uh, 400 million has been invested in the provision and the support of this type of traveller accommodation uh, over that period. Now, every local authority has a five-year programme to accelerate provision of traveller-specific accommodation. And as you're well aware, this requires very particular expertise in the consultation process uh, and the provision of the kind of uh, accommodation for traveller families uh, uh, which Thank has you. to be provided. They started back in 2000 and the current programme has run from 2014 to 2018. During the last programme there were 500 uh, accommodation units delivered. Um, every council has its own local traveller accommodation consultative committee. Uh, they comprise local authority officials, traveller representative groups and other relevant bodies including public representatives. They assist in the preparation of those five-year rolling programmes and they oversee implementation where that's possible. Now the NT uh, AWC is a national body appointed by the Minister. It comprises of the representatives of the different state agencies and so on. And that's a national platform for consultation. I might say that, uh, finish on this at Cancola, um, the site in Glenamook was not an unauthorised site. It was a temporary site with services provided by the local authority pending more permanent accommodation being put in place for the families. Uh, I understand that a site at, at Glen Druid in Dunlera Rathdown has been identified by the local authority in their traveller accommodation programme for 2014 to 2018 for a group housing scheme of five units uh, to meet the needs of the residents of Glen Amok. Uh, funding approval has been granted by the Department of the Environment, which is expected to be completed in 2017-2018. In the interim, there's a necessity at Cancola for a fully serviced temporary site in the area is now being discussed and um, being negotiated for those families with a view to it being ready for occupation in the very near future. Thank you. Deputy McLaughlin. Well, Taoiseach, I, I trust that you'll address the investment issues that I have raised here today and, and also the lack of leadership, not just at government level, but at local level across the state. But I have one more request to make of you uh, today, uh, Taoiseach. For too long, there has been a wall of distrust between the settled and travelling communities uh, in this state. Yesterday, some local residents in uh, Glen Namuk formed a blockade in protest uh, at the plans to rehouse uh, on an emergency basis, uh, the victims, those who have been left homeless by this uh, inferno. It's a depressing spectacle, but it reflects that wall of distrust that has been there for many, many years. We need citizens to show compassion, and I hope that the, the residents who are meeting with the Council today can uh, facilitate this emergency uh, arrangement. There's need for education understanding between the two communities, and that's a two-way uh, process. But Taoiseach, the Oireachtas Justice and Equality Committee have recommended quite a while ago that this state recognise the ethnicity of our travelling people. And that's been called for uh, by international human rights bodies that we subscribe uh, to. It is time, Taoiseach, for this state to respect the unique contribution of our travelling communities in terms of their music, uh, their language uh, and their adherence to the ancient nomadic ways. We need to teach their history in our schools. We need to break down the barriers and the walls that are there. It is time for the state to build the bridges of understanding. Thank you. It is time to build on the solidarity that's there after this horrific tragedy. So Taoiseach, will you stand up in this chamber and recognise the ethnicity of the travelling people? Will you show the necessary leadership that will not just be required by you, but by elected representatives across the state? Can we finally address the injustice of the report of itinerancy from the 1960s that seen them as a dirty problem that had to be swept under the carpet? Can we, can we once and for all be honest about the huge wall of distrust, build the barriers, can we recognise the ethnicity and start from there, Tisha? Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the, the first point that you make is an important point. Uh, clearly, the vast majority of communities in this country um, are quite prepared uh, to work with local authorities and different agencies in the interests of communities. Now, um, this is a very sensitive issue in that the funerals involved here haven't even taken place yet. 
uh, though uh, to balance that, I think there has to be an explanation to any community of what a local authority intend to do as an emergency measure. I think that's only normal courtesy that should apply uh, in any particular circumstance, and I do hope that that matter can be, uh, can be dealt with uh, today. Uh, to provide temporary accommodation uh, for those remaining families of the Glenamook, um, of the Glenamook uh, temporary site. Um, in respect of the, uh, uh, the deeper question that you raise, um, this is an issue that um, obviously is reacted to in different ways in different parts of the country. And in many cases it's based on unfortunate experiences that have taken place. Now, Minister of State O'Reardon has done quite a deal of work on this uh, and has brought a, a report to the uh, Cabinet Subcommittee in respect of the question of ethnicity, uh, whether that be recognised or not. And I don't think that there's any constitutional impediment to this, but the, uh, we've asked the Minister of State uh, to look at a number of issues arising from his presentation, and he will revert to the Committee in due course about that matter.